I'm Becca and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really simple peacock feather cane. It's a very very simple version of another one that I do which I will be doing in another uh, video but I just wanted to do this simple one to start off with so there's not that much that you actually need to do to do these ones and with these canes you can create beautiful beads that you can use in your jewellery and bead embroidery and there's uh, lots of different things that you can make with them so let's get started and I'll show you how so to get started out to make the uh, peacock feather cane I'm needing to create two Skinner blends this one's the uh, female Windsor blue and this is the female professional turquoise I think it was um, this one's just some greens that I've uh, popped together and this one I can't remember the name of it I've not got another packet of it but it's sort of like a mid blue anyway so uh, if you've got a, a dark one you can line it up or if you've got a lighter one uh, down it up that way I've put them into uh, triangles to just to do the uh, simple Skinner blend uh, this one is going to be for the eye at the top of the feather and this is going to be uh, the base of it so this part um, I'm making smaller than this one so this one's got probably twice as much clay as what there is on this one so if you don't know how to do a Skinner blend just basically folding it over onto itself and then running it through the pasta machine or using your rolling pin if you've not got a pasta machine and this end goes into the pasta machine first and it comes through so once so that's how we go and then you just keep turning it back on itself until you've got a nice blend and I'll go and do that with both of these and when I've got two nice blends I'll come back both of the blends are ready now so as you can see this one's half the size of what the other one is and I'm going to basically fold them onto themselves into this because it's that wide and I'm going to run them through the past machine on a number one and then uh, probably a number three or four uh, just to make them thinner and then once I've done that I'll come back and show you right, so these have both gone through on a number three and I'm going to do different things with them um, one I'm going to create a bullseye and the other one I'm going to create a uh, sort of a square block pretty much um, I'm wanting the this is a smaller one I'm wanting the darker colour to be in the middle I'm just taking it up from one end and try and squish any air out um, as you're rolling it just stops you from having to try and squish it out later on but this is just a simple bullseye what we're doing don't worry about the edges being uh, all roughly and a bit of a mess because once the uh, cane gets put together and made you, you're not going to notice any of that so just try and squeeze it up as you're going along and then I might actually wrap this with another round of the original um, turquoise that I used simply because it's not got that much there so I want to just give it an extra line of that on the outside it's not the straightest cut but never mind the other thing while I've just remembered I had a brainwave while I was in Ikea the other day now if you struggle with cutting your uh, clay um, straight or in whole lines I generally use my uh, bigger blade but I thought pizza cutter and I've tried it and it's really really good just be careful you don't cut yourself on it but it gives you that extra momentum so if you're having dexterity problems this will uh, help you cut your uh, clay a little bit more straighter and this was a pound from Ikea so just thought I'd share that with you anyway uh, if any of you struggle um, cutting your clay in straight lines right so let's go around Just kiss it to the other side and <coughs> it puts a registration mark. There we go. So we've got that one. I'll just give it a good squeeze. And a roll. Okay, so we're going to keep that one to the side. Like I said, that one's going to be for the eye. 
now with this one I'm wanting to um, create a fan fold just so that we get like a such a square block but I'll show you what I mean so I'm just going to fold it onto itself backwards and forwards a bit like when you made those paper fans when you were at school or I did at least and it's just to create the bottom end of the uh, feather and try to squish any air out as you're going along it just saves you a bit of work later on So I've got it into a sort of squished up square in a minute, but I'm just going to take my acrylic block now and I'm going to press it down and just make it so that it's even on the way around, even go on the ends. It's going to get chained into a different shape anyway, but this just ensures that you get all the uh, air out of it, or at least as much as it, of it as you can. So what I'm going to do is, this is going to be the base of the uh, feather and uh, I want to put a line in the centre so it does look uh, you know, as much like a feather. This is a really basic version of uh, a peacock cane um, that I've done. I will be doing a separate video on the one that's uh, sort of a more in-depth one but this is just the, um, you know, the uh, basic one that I'm doing. And I'm just double checking which way around it. Yeah, I did that way around. So the blue is going to be the tip of the uh, feather, and this is uh, this side is going to be where I put the eye of it. So what I want to do is I'm just going to put some white down the centre, sort of like the centre arm of a feather. If that's what I'm not right sure what you have to call it, the spine of the feather. So I'm just going to chop it right down the middle okay. so as you can see I've got all let the air out of it and I've just got some pearl white now I'm not going to have it going up the same thickness I don't think because I think that's on the number one that I've got it on and whatever's in the centre reduces less so I'm just going to take a little bit of this off and uh, reduce it down So, until I've been conditioning clay, because I've got some uh, blue coming through the other end. So, I'm just going to put a, a line of that on the inside. Okay, okay. so that's going to be the bottom of the feather. Now the way that I've done it, I've pointed it, well, I did a test run of it, and I shaped this into a triangle, so I just squished the blue end, and then the blue sort of comes around the bottom of the spine, we'll go with spine, it might not be right, if, if it's not spine and somebody knows what it is, comment and let me know please. <laughs> Because I think of these things afterwards and think I ought to have really, uh, you know, looked these bits up. But there we go. So I've got my nice triangular shape. Okay. And we can just plan it off with that. And then this is going to be a bit too big, so I'm going to reduce it down. Um, when I'm reducing this down, I'd just like to squeeze from the centre and work outwards. We need it to be the same uh, length 
there's this one and we're going to put some gold on it okay. so that's a bit more like it I'd say so cut off the end just to make sure I cut the pull so as you can see um, that's his bullseye that we've done and cut this So, as you can see, I've got a nice piece that's going to go there. Now, I'm going to just... This is just something that's got a blunt edge. You could um, use a, a clay spatula or um, I'm trying to think what else there is. This, I can't remember where I got. I think this might have been actually out of a phone screen package that I've got. And I thought that would be good for pushing down in the, into canes. So, I'm just going to push down into it. And it's just going to create that sort of heart shape that goes at the top of the feather and it pushes that sort of turquoise in a little bit. See it sort of makes that dimpled shape. Okay. And then I'm just going to put another strip of that turquoise in just to fill it in just to Add more. So, don't be afraid to just add some more clay. If it's not got as much of one colour in as you want, then just add a bit more. Nobody needs to know that we've altered it along the way. And I bet you most people wouldn't even notice at all anyway. Probably just it. Uh, us crafters are our own worst critics, as I keep telling my friend. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just pushing that in there and then I'll round it back up. So how it makes that dip in the middle. And then the next bit is I'm just going to put some like a gold piece on the top. So I'll take just a piece off again, work it out as to how much you want to put it in. I'm just going to draw it into a log. into a triangle now because when I did the test from nine year I did it before and I don't see why I can't do it now anyway. And come round it more off if uh, that's what you want. So nice clean edge and we want it to be the same width or length should I say as the eye piece. Okay, so that's going to be the top of our feather. And then what we need to do now is we're going to make a dip into this piece. So uh, you could use your roller if you've not got anything else. Um, you could use uh, a wide pen. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, a, a chunky paintbrush. Just something to uh, make a dip into your uh, cane. So I'll go with this one because most people have got pens and if you're doing clear you've probably got a roller anyway. But I'm just going to push it in and I'm going to bring these side pieces up. Let's keep pressing it down and then once you've got it going you can just pinch these pieces up. Because I'm wanting that to come up and around here. So that, that, and that off just a little bit more. So if you're looking at peacock feathers, they have all those wispy bits coming up around the eye. But this is, like I said, this is the more basic of the ones 
that I'm gonna do. So if we just keep on doing that until you've got it going up as far as you, you want it to. You can always push down some more incense with whatever you've used. Okay, there we go. Right, so that's grown a little bit with me squishing it, so I'll just push it back down. Keep pulling it up, you don't need to come any further. What I think I might do actually is I might put just a thin layer of gold going around all the way because I know on some of the pictures that I've looked at Peacock Kings, um, they've got sort of like a sort of a gold outer edge and that's just with the actual peacocks having a sort of a lighter feather you know the parts of the feather are on the outside so I don't think there's quite enough uh, condition there so I'll get into a number two so. you know my uh, little trick with the uh, pizza cutter. So wanting to make sure you've not got an air pocket underneath, I'll just get your pizza cutter there. Nice straight edge. This way. It's just so that when it's reduced it's got that little bit of a golden edge because uh, the feathers when they uh, get the light going through them they can look quite light so I thought the gold would be a nice uh, contrast to it so there we go. So as you can see this is quite a big cane it's not the biggest ones I've ever done but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce it down um, because obviously I don't want to come to this size and that's something that's just fallen and uh, reduce uh, a teardrop kit in like this I just like to put it against the mat and I'll just keep pushing on the top this way and flipping it over you can even do it that way as well or I'll just rock it a little bit just press from the top try and make it even pressure all the time if you feel that your clay gets um, too squishy just let it rest for half an hour uh, just for it to let it firm up again because if you go and uh, reduce it too quickly and the clay is really really soft you can distort it and then you won't get that nice straight line going up the centre it don't matter if it's not completely straight but me it bothers me when, they, when it's not straight going up the centre so uh, I just like to set my time a little bit so I'm going to go and uh, finish doing this off camera because it may take a while but like I said just keep squishing and pulling and take your time with it just so that it doesn't distort too much so I'll go and do that and I'll come back when I'm done before I reduce it any uh, more I'm wanting to just wrap it in gold leaf it just gives that extra bit of sparkle plus it's good for uh, storing your canes now I'm gonna wrap it in this so my gold leaf is smaller than it so I'm gonna uh, have to do it in uh, separate sections I've not cut any of the ends off yet just simply because I don't want to get any gold leaf when I'm not wanting it and I'll be cutting off uh, the extra bits um, so I'll get a nice clean cut at the end 
So, it's on that one. It's very uh, lightweight and it can be a bit fiddly, this gold leaf, but it's good for storing your canes as well so that they don't actually stick to each other. Of course, there's all, nothing wrong with an extra bit of uh, sparkle going on. So, and then I'll just roll it in. And anywhere that you miss, you can just get these little bits that fall off. And get it in all different colours. I've only ever had gold, silver and copper. But I would like to try some of the uh, different coloured ones one day. So it's, it's on my uh, wish list for the future, what we might crafty wishes. So I've just done that now and then I'll just carry on reducing it down. Because it's turned into quite a large cane, I'll uh, store some uh, when it's just a bit smaller than this and then just reduce down some of it for me to show you uh, how to make the beads that we're going to need for uh, the next uh, video that I'm going to do. So I'll go and reduce that and then I'll be back. Right, I've got that reduced and I've got three canes that I'm going to put into storage. So as you can see, you get a heck of a lot out of just that one. And then this I've reduced down to the size I'm wanting and that's 15 inches long. And I'll get quite a lot of beads uh, from this one. Oops, sorry, turning the camera instead of zooming in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two different ways that you can use this to turn it into beads. Now the first one is just doing uh, slices and those are just sort of like two or three millimetres thick something like that and then so it'd be just like this and then if you take a, a needle tool and then you can put a hole just near the bottom and use it a bit like a sequin and use that way it's a bit squished because I've uh, just been uh, reducing it and then the other way is just to was the opposite end and then uh, I'll go for that. So this is a Max It tool. This is one that I learned how to do from uh, Susan at Total Soul Beads. I'll put a Patreon in below so you can uh, find out how to make one of these yourself. And you just line it up and this is the 5mm one. As you can see mine's well loved and missing a few uh, wires but I can stick some more back on. And then <coughs> just straighten off end of the cane. Do it with the uh, right side of the blade it would help. And then just slice it off and then just take your needle tool and wiggle it through. And then you can use it just like a regular bead and you'll uh, feed it from one end to the other one. So I'm just a one box. I'm not sure if I yeah, it just came off camera then. Now depending on how small you make your beads is how many you'll get out of your cane. I'm going to use all of this, I'm going to do half uh, with the thinner ones where I uh, pierce it at the end like I showed you first and then I'll do half uh, doing it this way as well so I'll see how many that I get. So I'm going to go and do that off camera because you don't want to just see me slicing uh, away to cane and then once I've got them done I'll come back and I'll show you how many I've done. So I've got these all cut and uh, skewered just ready for baking now. So these are the ones that I've done just with the little hole at the bottom for me to work, do it that way. And these are the other ones where I've just skewered it top to bottom. So they just need baking and glazing now and then they'll be ready to use. So I'm going to go and do that because you don't need to see me doing it. I'm just going to glaze it with either Pledge Revive it or um, this Kalal glaze that I've got. I'm going to see uh, what this one's like. So I'll either be uh, coating them individually or putting them on a, a string and letting them dry. But once I've got them done I'll come back and I'll uh, show you and uh, then I'll tell you what we can make with them. So I've got all my uh, beads all glazed and ready to use. As you can see I've got whoop, <laughs> tipping them up again. Um, they've got a nice shiny coating and this was the one that the varnish that I showed you, I've not actually got it on me yet, now I've left it in the house. Um, but I basically just put them on end of a cocktail stick and I painted the varnish on and they were dry in probably less than an hour. So uh, they were really good though and it saved me having to uh, string them up on a piece of wire and dip them into uh, the other one that I usually use. Now these are the ones that are um, skewered from top to bottom and then these are the ones that I did just piercing the, the, the uh, pointed end. And I've still got 
all of these left over that I can use for many other different things. So I'm really pleased with that. So that's the end of this one. I'm um, going to show you how I use these to create some beautiful peacock earrings. And this is one of them. Uh, one of the first ones that I got made. And I really, really like them. I've got a bit of a uh, obsession with peacocks. I just think they're, uh, they're beautiful. And uh, my husband uh, noticed um, a picture when we went to Ikea recently and it had got a peacock on it and he said, oh, they'd make nice e uh, earrings like uh, the owl ones that I'd made. So that were it. When I got home, I uh, wanted to have a go and then uh, making the cane was the first part of it. So that's going to be the next tutorial that's coming out, but I just wanted to show you what you can actually do with them. And you can just put loads of these on because they're as light as anything and they're not heavy at all these earrings because uh, I've put a few CBs around the edge but I'll explain that in the video why I've done that and um, you know just the pieces of polymer clay they're just so light anyway so uh, I hope you'll uh, check that one out as well if you've liked the video if you could give me a thumbs up that'd be appreciated and if you've not subscribed if you consider subscribing that would be appreciated too so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye